So I'm a guy that has been driving old body style Fords for like the last 15 years. Up until recently, I've had no problem with what I've owned and I've made modifications to all of them. However, I had to make a change and I want to talk about that change because it seems like there's a lot of people that have a problem with change and maybe I'm one of them, but let me tell you what helped me out and maybe it'll help you out too. to is my last video that I talked about changing over our 97 F250 HD 460 extended cab long bed two wheel drive and there's a lot of people that were on my other channel if you don't know I have another channel that we do RVing and we're actually transitioning from homeowners with kids in the house to empty nesters and selling our home and we're gonna be traveling the country in an RV full time I mentioned on that channel the comparison between my old truck and the new truck and what I thought about it and boy oh boy did that open the floodgates to a lot of people that might be a little bit closed mind a little bit of old school I was one of them I still am one of them I still love those old trucks but let me go ahead and tell you what I got into and then we'll talk specifics and all the differences that we've got going on here so this is what I moved into this is a 2019 F250 it is an XL model it's the bottom rung model but it does have an STX appearance package now I did the same thing as I always do I got an extended cab and a long bed I'll talk about that in a little bit I did get a four-wheel drive I'll talk about that in a little bit I did stick with a gas engine and I'll talk about that a little bit but I want to address first everyone that has problems with this and issues with this so let's go ahead and get that out of the way yes the 460 was an unbelievable engine yes the 302 was a great engine. Yes, the 351 was a great engine. Yes, the 300 inline six was an unbelievable engine. Yes, the 7.3 power stroke was a great engine. Yes, the 7.3 IDI with and without a turbo was a great engine. Yes, the 6.9 IDI was a great engine. I understand everybody loves those trucks and those engines. And I want you to think about that. Ford really didn't have a miss. They didn't have a miss with any of those engines for all those years. They stuck with something that worked. But they did progress. Can you imagine if all the guys that had the IDI engine, the 6.9 with no turbo, or the 7.3 with no turbo, again, the international version, if those guys would just say, oh my God, you've ruined it. You got a 7.3 power stroke. Nothing's going to beat that IDI. We know the IDI was great, but now you have a whole group of power stroke guys who are saying that 7.3 is the most incredible engine that's ever built. The same with the guys that had the 302s that moved into something else like a 351 or the 300 inline six guys. We know those engines were good, but can you imagine keeping everybody just driving the one vehicle and dealing with the one engine? I, I just don't see it. And it's the same with the truck. I remember clearly whenever the fuel injection started being installed on the old trucks, on the OBS trucks to be exact, uh, the early OBS trucks, all the guys that were buying trucks, F-150s, F-250s, high boys, from the early 70s to the mid 70s, all of them said, oh, these newfangled fuel injection trucks, they're going to be horrible. It's just not going to be good at all. Man, they're not, they're not making them like they used to. That high boy, and they go on and on about this high boy and how good it was with the divorced case and all the features of it being a real truck. Again, getting into an old body style truck and it's refined. And you got power windows and air conditioning and everything is nice and quiet inside. Even though some of that stuff was available on those old high boys, a lot of people didn't option to bend because they were just wanting a truck. And trucks were used differently then. Trucks are now used as vehicles. I'm talking about everyday vehicles because they can. And it's because they're more refined. They got more refined going to those old body style trucks. And they've got more refined again. 
So for somebody that's just been kind of spoon fed from their dad or their grandfather, how great those old trucks used to be, they, they're still great. And they'll always be great. But because there's a new truck that's come out, it doesn't make it any less great. So, but let me argue with you for a second here. Let's say this truck is not quite as great. This is the greatness the old truck was, the 97 F250 HD with a 460. Let's say it's that great. But let's say this truck is less. Is it half the truck? No, I doubt that. I seriously doubt that. And I'm arguing with you. I'm trying to be argumentative, but I'm trying to be realistic. Is it three quarters the truck that old one was? Okay, let's go with that. Let's just say it was about three quarters, maybe a little bit more than three quarters. So comparing this truck with the old 97 F250, if it's three quarters the truck the old one was, um, 15 years. I should be able to get 15 years out of this. The old truck is 20 years old. It had 185,000 miles on it. So this one should go 15 years and I should be able to get 160,000 miles out of it. Let's even say only 140,000. I don't have a problem with that. In the meantime, I will enjoy a truck that will accelerate faster. I've, I've already done a test on that. It will tow and accelerate faster. I've got the exact same RV I pulled with the old 460. This truck is faster pulling it, accelerating it, getting up to speed. All right, guys, here we are in the old truck. We're going up a little, or new truck. We're going up a little bit of a hill. And I have to say that it accelerates a lot like the old truck. Yeah, that's 70. New truck's concerned in its towing capability. going up the hill in front of our house. And it just likes to wind out more, but it doesn't feel like it's falling off in power at all. I get better gas mileage empty. I know that for a fact, because I know what the old truck got. The best I ever got with the old truck was 13 miles at a gallon. I drove 47 miles 
at 56 to 60 miles an hour at the most. This truck here, I can drive that same speed and get 17 miles to the gallon. It also gets better gas mileage when I'm just powling around and not paying attention to speed or gas mileage. That truck, the old 460, would always get around 10 miles to the gallon for the most part on average. This truck here gets around 12 miles to 13 miles to the gallon on average, just driving around, not doing anything special. And on top of that, it still gets about 11 miles to the gallon when I put that stupid E85 in it. Well, my old truck would never do that. So if E85 is real cheap, I may stick it in there if I'm not going to tow or go anywhere. The truck has more horsepower. It's in a different RPM range, but the truck's not exploding to do that horsepower. It's a really good long RPM range where the old 460 had a pretty narrow spot that it really shined. And I would love to keep it in that spot all the time, but sometimes I had to get out of it. I had to accelerate a little bit faster than I wanted to. I had to put it above 3000 RPMs towing. And at that point, the truck would fall off a little bit. This one has a tendency to keep itself in that range a little better. It has more torque over a larger curve. The old truck had great amount of torque and with all the modifications that I did, which were pretty probably comparable in torque to this one, but again, it was a narrow band. Now that all can be contributed to the transmission of the truck. This one being a six speed, the old one being a four speed. There's a reason why they've upgraded and changed things. I mean, even the new trucks that are coming out in 2020, they're gonna be most likely 10 speeds. And there's a potential it's gonna be a whole different engine, a bigger engine. Yet again, I believe this 6.2 liter even though it's not 400 cubic inches, can be compared for you old school guys like me to the 400 modified or the 351 cubic inch Cleveland, which is essentially the same engine. You can keep that, you can compare that engine with the 460 as you're gonna be comparing this engine, the 6.2, with the new engine, the new gas engine is gonna be coming out shortly. So is that going to make this truck better than the new one? Because, oh man, those new trucks, they're not made the way they're used to anymore. I'm telling you that the 6.2 engine, this thing is a very good engine. Before we bought it, did a lot of research. I talked to guys that were fleet mechanics and they had went to gas, first of all, they got rid of their diesels and they went to gas engines uh, to help with maintenance cost. Even though the longevity of the engine overall would have eventually paid for itself, a lot of times they just didn't want to spend the kind of time and money that was required for everyday oil changes on those things because of how much money that was involved. So the 6.2 gas engine, although it's not a pulling monster like the 6.7 diesel, it has its place. And those guys running those fleet vehicles, we're talking about 250 to 320,000 miles that they were getting out of these 6.2s with minimal maintenance, just like they were with the diesels. So there's definitely a comparison that can be had talking about going into a gas versus a diesel, but that's a whole nother topic. What I'm saying though, is for somebody just to get on the keyboard and do their keyboard warrior thing. There's no way that new truck's gonna last even close to the old one. Well, what's even close? Again, 15 years? I think that's, that's pretty darn good because I know a lot of OBS trucks that are in the junkyard right now, and that's because their bodies just fell apart. We're in the rust belt. I'm hoping to get out of the rust belt, but that old truck started to show its rust. It started to see rust in its keep places that turn into big problems later down the road. Now, in the case of that truck, when I sold it, exceptional. It was, the frame was exceptional, the control arms, all the leaf spring mounts, everything was fine with it. The oil pan wasn't rusted, nothing. It was, there was nothing going on there. But nonetheless, it had started and it doesn't stop once it starts. Just remember that. So getting into the new truck, it was a big investment, sure. But I don't make those kind of investments without thinking about it thoroughly. So for someone to say, Oh, that's, that's a bad mistake. You should have never done it. Trust me. I thought about it and I should have done it. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the two trucks and some of the differences that you could see if you are just like me, somebody who drove old body style trucks for a long time and now getting into the new one. But first, let me go ahead and recap what I owned. 94 F-150 extended cab long bed two wheel drive. 
I put a cap on the back and I used it for business. It had 256,000 miles when I got rid of it and it was very rusty. I had to replace all the spring mounts whenever I first got it and I had to replace the control arms. Other than that, the engine ran great. I got great gas mileage and it did the job. And the job that I had at the time was I had a small engine shop here at the house and I would go to the equipment auction. I'd pick up used power equipment. I would load the truck up with it. I had a trailer that I pulled. I'd load the trailer up with it. I'd come back here, repair the units. And as those units were being repaired and serviced and put out for sale or posted for sale, I would also service customers equipment and part of my service was I would go to their house use a couple of eight foot wooden ramps and I would load their equipment in the back of that truck even with the cap on and I loved the truck and everything that it did for me however it was very rusty and it was time for me to get into something different so I bought a 95 F-150 XLT now the first one the 94 was an XL model vinyl seats vinyl floor air conditioning manual windows that's it the XLT, as you can expect, if you know anything about Fords, that's one of the lines that are a little bit more on the top of the ladder. Used to be back then, that was the top line uh, in XLT. Power windows, power locks, cruise control, tilt, air conditioning, and a little bit more comfortable ride inside, softer seats, and carpeted floor. It was also an extended cab, long bed, two-wheel drive. All the years that I've lived in Northeast Ohio, there's only been a couple of times I've needed a four-wheel drive it's not really that bad I mean there's ways around it and I've only got stuck a couple of times and thought man if I had four-wheel drive I could just flip the lever however that truck did have a cap on the back of it too and I put a hitch on it because we started instead of tent camping we got a pop-up camper so now I'm pulling a pop-up camper with that truck and in the back of the truck we would load it with firewood mopeds bikes and we would travel all over and we would camp and the truck did a very good job it, it was perfect for doing that we sold one pop-up camper we got a bigger little heavier than the first one pop-up camper and started towing that within a short amount of time of owning the second pop-up camper we decided that we wanted to get into a travel trailer so I bought a travel trailer and even though it wasn't overly heavy and well within what the truck could tow I could definitely notice it.
196,000 miles when I got rid of it. However, I'd done a bunch of work on it, and if you guys haven't seen my previous videos on that work, uh, I'm sure it's down in one of the playlists, anything that is vehicle related. Uh, I did all kinds of exhaust work, aftermarket ignition. I actually did two different types of exhaust, um, increased the cooling. I did everything that I could to increase the power, uh, got rid of the uh, catalytic converters, and it was a good vehicle. It did really well. It had good horsepower, but towing that trailer and everything I loaded up in the back of the truck would actually put it over its gross combined vehicle weight rating, just a little bit. But the truck still, like a trooper, did its job and pulled the RV. But I knew if we were going to go on longer multi-state trips that we we're going to need something a little bit better, a little bit more sturdy. So that gets me to the third and the last OBS that I owned. And that was the 97 F250 HD extended cab long bed two wheel drive. And again, same cap actually, I had it repainted and I put it on that truck. The big difference was that truck had the 460 in it. And whenever we towed that RV, the very first time I got in the truck and I drove it up the road, I couldn't believe the difference. The difference between the F-150 towing and the F-250 towing was incredible. So I knew I made a good choice. A lot of it had to do with the chassis stiffening and it was bigger brakes and it was designed to tow and haul more than that F-150. However, that 460 engine, I mean, you could tell. It just, it felt really good. It, it just had good pulling power. So again, lots of modifications to that truck. And I was getting to the point where I would have had to make some really big modifications to meet my last couple needs. And that was fuel mileage and better towing range whenever we weren't on the highway. And what I mean by that is when I left the traffic light or I was going up a hill, I wish I had more gears. So the only way I was going to be able to accomplish those two things after all the modifications I made was to do a mass airflow conversion. And even though you could do it, you know, with junkyard parts, I would have definitely bought a kit. So it would have been about $1,600 for that. And then the other thing, the big thing, adding gears to the transmission. And of course, that's going to be a gear vendors unit. Well, the gear vendors unit, that's about $3,000. Plus you have to do some custom drive shaft work. Uh, that's, that's a lot of money to outlay. You're talking $4,600 and to boot it would have still only been two wheel drive. Now, like I said, I never had a problem with two wheel drive, but now I'm getting to the point where I have to start thinking about this goal that we have on our other channel, and that's to go full-time RVing and be able to camp at the beach, on the beach, and be able to explore areas like in Outer Banks that tell you that you can't go out in this location unless you have a four wheel drive. Um, also out in the desert, if we're boondocking out in BLM land, if you guys don't know what that is, that's Bureau of Land Management. That is land that is owned or maintained, I should say, by the government. It's actually owned by the American people. It's just maintained by the American government. And you can go camp out there for relatively free. Um, there's a small fee that you have to pay just so they can keep track of who's on the land. But nonetheless, this is what you would think is desert land. You may get to a point where there's a wash in the road, a dry wash. Well, that wash is there for a reason. And there's people that have been out camping and a rainstorm has hit so many miles away and then the water has finally made it to them and that road wash is now a washed out road yep rivers up <laughs> can you believe this look at this i've been up since about two o'clock when i heard heavy rains coming down and i was somewhat concerned because you're in, when you're in the desert there's no place for water to go except through these washes if we have to make an escape from the campsite we won't be able to go anywhere except to higher ground to the south of the campsite if it comes out of the bank there and starts crossing right here in front of me it will cross and we'll cut off our uh, our only escape so all i gotta do is watch that little one and as soon as i think there's a threat we'll just jump in the truck and drive straight across god forbid if you're out and you get into an emergency and you actually need to traverse that you're not going to be doing that with a two-wheel drive some of those locations you probably want to get to with a two-wheel drive even if it was dry and it wasn't wet so i had a need for a four-wheel drive for the first time in my life 
So that's another thing that I could have done to that old truck, but the money that would have been involved would have been crazy. So now you can see all the reasons why we got the truck. Let's go ahead and just talk about the straight on comparisons of what I've noticed now that I've got into this new truck and what you can expect if you have an old truck and, a, and an old body style guy just like me and you decide, you know what, maybe I want one of these trucks. You, you're probably thinking about it. You're probably at some point, if you're watching this video, thinking maybe I want to move into a new truck, but I'm just not sure. Let's go talk about that. We'll take a break real quick from me talking to talk about something else. <laughs> I did put a cap on the truck. Uh, this is a Lear cap. I love this thing. And I did put a bed rug in here. Um, there's some modifications you're going to want to make to your truck when you first get it. Just like I did my old truck. My old truck had a cap on it and it did have a bed rug. I did option the Lear locker. Uh, so far I like that a lot. But this is a, a, a utility bed. This is a bed that's not necessarily going to be used for hauling dirt and gravel and mulch. Although this liner can handle that, it's not going to be doing that. That's not what this is for. Uh, this is so I can climb up in here and not tear up my knees as this is padded. And uh, yeah, really nice. You can see I've got some floor mats I have to install. Uh, you guys, if any of this stuff is interesting to you, I'll put the links down below so you can look at exactly what I got. Of course, this is going to work for the 2017 uh, F250, 2018 F250, and 2019 F250. So as far as creature comforts, no comparison. And I know a lot of you guys, because I've seen comments already on my other channel. That's just a bunch of gadgets. You're driving around just a big toy. All right, so it's a big toy. Nonetheless, I like it. I'm sure you're telling me this on your bottom of the line 1996 running Windows 2000 computer, right? Or better yet, you're on your flip phone typing that out. Wait a minute, you're telling me you have a smartphone? Why would you get a smartphone? And you're telling me that you're doing it on a laptop computer that's uh, running some kind of uh, i7 processor? Yeah, why is that? When you could get away with the, you know, the old hamster in the uh, treadmill computers that were offered back in the late 90s. Yeah, there's upgrades, and there's no reason to be fearful of the upgrades. If something goes wrong, I've got a warranty on this. That's the other big plus of having a new vehicle. This warranty that I got is an extended warranty. It's good for 75,000 miles, and I got an addendum to that to go a little bit further. It's going to be covered for the next eight years. So how much problem am I going to have with this truck? I don't think that much, and if I do, Ford is everywhere. I'll stop, drop it off somewhere and let them fix it. Now, as far as the comparison between the two trucks, again, this one's got much better creature comforts in it. This one rides a little rougher. Reason one, it's a four-wheel drive. Reason two, it has a camper and snowplow package. This is rated to be able to handle a slide-in camper. There is a rating that's needed for certain states for you to be certified to carry a slide-in camper in your truck. We're not going to carry a slide-in camper, but with that package, you do get a rear sway bar and the springs in the back are a little bit beefier. The springs that I had on my old HD truck were almost identical to this one. So as far as the rear end, I think that it's pretty much exactly the same. Now, this one has 373 gears. The old one had 410s, thing that gives it the rough ride. Again, getting to that camper package. That's giving you stiffer front springs. So you're getting a little bit deterioration in ride there. The third thing that's affecting the ride quality on this one is the tires. I have Goodyear All-Terrain, which is some sort of a Kevlar Adventure All-Terrain tire that came with this truck from the factory. And if I come up with some extra cash, I'm definitely going to convert it over to the same tires that were on my F-250, the tires that were on my previous F-150, and it's also the tires that I suggested my son run, and he does, on his 88 Club Wagon van. You can see, I'm still old school. I told him to buy an old van because it's easy to work on. It's cheap. And those tires that I would recommend are the Michelin LTX MS2s. I, have, I can't find nothing wrong with them. I mean, literally, as picky as I can be, over tens of thousands of miles that I've run them, I can't find one flaw. They don't wear fast. They're not hard. They're quiet. They handle great in the rain. They handle great in the snow. They handle great on ice. They handle great in deep snow. They handle okay in really deep mud. They're probably not as good at self-cleaning as some of the all-terrain tires that are out there uh, when you get into deep mud, but they did a really good job. 
So eventually that's the tires that'll be on this truck, I'm sure. Uh, as far as having the all-terrains on here, I'd like to see how they perform in the desert first before I rule them out completely because I'm sure they're going to shine there. Uh, the other tires, the Michelin LTX MS2s, are also really good for hydroplaning. They, they displace water really well. Again, I'm going to have to check with these and see how they feel whenever we get into some heavy downpours. I've only run into that a little bit so far. Now, as far as the truck and its driving ability, I'm going to say something you're going to hate it. You're going to hate it. I know all you old school guys, you're going to hate it because I hated it. I was hoping there was some chance that there was something that was going to be better about that old truck after all that work I did that was going to compare to this new truck. This truck is faster empty. It is faster loaded. It is faster when it's towing. It accelerates faster. It's got more torque. It is smoother. It gets better gas mileage. It's better handling than that old 460 and that OBS. nothing wrong with that OBS. So I get some guys that have seen a, a race that I put together and they saw how bad this truck was whooping on that old Ford and they come up with all kinds of excuses. You weren't running the RPMs out. It's a big block. That big block doesn't work at those high RPMs. You don't run it up to 5,000 RPMs. It, you're wasting time. The idea is to get it, shift it, and go to the next gear that it makes the most power. The second thing they said was, that old truck is wore out. Wore out, I towed my 6,000 pound trailer with my back of my truck loaded with gear, including a generator and a toolbox and all kinds of stuff. Through the heat of the summer, 2,900 miles down through Florida and back to Ohio, and it used half a quart of oil. How wore out could have been? That thing was powerful. It was good. I never had to change the oil and be concerned that I was low oil in between. I would have to add half a quarter oil in between changes if I was towing during that oil change. And I would tow 4,000 miles before I do an oil change. So the truck wasn't wore out. There was nothing wrong with it. This truck was just that much better. It's not like Ford just made up these horsepower and torque numbers and everybody just believed them. This truck actually produces that horsepower. And the fact that they do it so quiet and it's so refined and this transmission is so smooth, I love it. I mean, I really do love it. And there's no reason for me to tell you a fib about this because if I didn't like this and I had a problem with it, I would tell you. I would tell you that I don't like it. You know the one thing that I don't like on this truck compared to the old one? that the back end is so much lighter that when I go around corners and we're in winter here in Ohio and the road has got bumps in the road where maybe they patched it or something in a curve or in a turn, the back end likes to hop around a little bit. Now part of that might be the tires, but a lot of it has to do with the back end. It's, it's light. I mean, this is a light truck. I don't know what it weighs overall yet. Now that I got the cap on it, I'm going to have to take it up to the scales up the street and I'm going to see how much it weighs. But as far as the trucks feel whenever you're driving it, you can tell it's lighter. The other thing that I don't necessarily like is the drive-by wire throttle. And I don't know if I just need to get used to it or maybe I just hate it. But when I push the gas, sometimes there's a little bit of a smooth transition that's going on there that I'm not used to. I'm used to being able to feel the throttle underneath my foot and know that if I push it just a little bit more, that throttle blade's going to open just that much more. And I don't get that feel with this. However, the response is pretty good, and I like it overall. Um, it does some weird stuff if you are really getting into it, and then you let off uh, before it shifts. Uh, the RPMs won't come down right away. It, it's strange because the throttle body motor hadn't got the message, your foot's off the gas, and it's preparing to shift because it's following a pattern. It thinks that you're going to continue to, to speed. Um, I don't care for that. Other than that, uh, I love the truck. It's 
there's nothing not to like about it. Um, I'm getting used to trying to get up into the truck. It's a little bit taller, uh, but I like how much more vision I have from this height. Um, I didn't think that I would like that, but I'm getting used to it. So I think overall, I pretty much covered everything I can think of about this truck. And I'm telling you that if you have an old body style Ford, and no matter how much work you've done on it and how nice it is and how great it is, if you like it, stick with it. But if you are even considering getting into a newer vehicle and you're scared to death you're going to make a mistake and that you're going to get something horrible, I'm telling you firsthand, you're not. It's not bad. It's not good. It's great. It's a great replacement for that old truck. And this is coming from someone who done a ton of work on that old truck to make it personal and make it perfect for me. Uh, oh, I do have one other minus that's on this truck that I want to mention though, and it's probably pretty minor. My old truck had a dual tanks. I really got used to all these years having dual tanks. I'm not used to having one tank. Not only that, but my old truck had a 19 gallon in the front and I converted the rear to a 38. This one only has a 34, so I'm getting used to it. Good thing is, some of the toys that are inside tells me distance to empty, so I just keep an eye on that. So if you're thinking about getting into a new truck again, and you have an old truck and you've loved it for many years, keep your old truck. If you don't have a need like we do to upgrade, and yes, this is clearly an upgrade, then don't do it. Stick with your old one. I would have stuck with our old one if it wasn't for the fact that we were going to be traveling so much more than we currently are, and I needed a four-wheel drive. I would have kept the old truck, and I would have been happy with it, and I would have never known how great this truck was, but the other truck would have been in my pocket and all I had to do is just keep on making the repairs that it needed over the years. So I'm going to let you guys make your own decision on this. I really appreciate it. And to rehash it one more time, if you're happy with your old truck, great. If you don't have a need for a new truck, great. But if you're thinking about it, this is great. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. All right, guys. So for about the last four miles, I've been running with my foot to the floor in third gear. 3,000 RPMs and these are the hills that we've got in the Virginia West Virginia area and the trucks climbed up to Well, it says over 210, but I don't think that's accurate. And now I'm getting stuck. We got some real slow trucks which blows That's uh, it's some serious, serious, serious hill here. It just keeps on going up. And this is working this thing hard. This is the hardest it's got to work.